So in this video, I'm going to cover a little bit about sharding. You probably heard of this word and it sounds suspiciously familiar with brown stuff coming out of your pants. So sharding is a process by which it, a network can really scale. Something like Ethereum wants to do sharding to increase the number of transactions it can take per second and also increase the amount of computational power it does. Sharding achieves this by basically dividing the network into teams. So right now at this current state on the Ethereum network, we have tons and tons of computers all holding the public ledger and all doing the same functions as well, the Ethereum virtual machine. The virtual machine runs on every single computer and the fact is that adding computers onto this network does not improve efficiency. The reason why is because the whole ledger is kept, the same ledger is kept on every computer. But that's a waste, right? Why have that ledger, the same ledger on every single computer? That's not really necessary. So sharding is a way of splitting the network into teams. So now the network will be fractured into teams and now it can compete. So every team can do its own little thing, it process transactions and well, it can even do calculations as well. So by breaking them up into segments, you drastically increase the output or the um, efficiency of the network. So if you do two teams, well, it's twice as many transactions. If you do 10 teams, well, it's 10 times. And you can shard many times because there's thousands of computers on the Ethereum network or even on the Bitcoin network. So this is something that's not very new to computer science as well. In fact, sharding is around for centralized databases for ages. And that's why in video games, they can have so many players all happening and trading and doing different things. And in fact, sharding is so common there that it's very well established. But the problem with sharding in computer science is that sharding works for centralized services very well. So we know how to do that. And the challenge now is to bring that onto a decentralized network. How do you make sure that the teams talk to each other? That is the most dangerous part about sharding, the fact that if the shards don't communicate very well with each other, then there's a chance that someone can exploit that communication gap and create extra Ethereum on the network or extra anything on the network, the native currency. So that is one of the risks to sharding, and this is why it's taking so long for the Ethereum or other networks to create a sharding solution. So right now, as current state, Ethereum wants to shard. We also have projects like Zilliqa that has proposed sharding solutions coming this year. And we even have something like Cardano, and they want team leaders and team groups to work together. So it's an also a sharding solution. So there's multiple projects that all want to implement sharding, and it's going to be exciting to see which one wins out, which one is the first project to get sharding working correctly, and not to be exploited by the general public. What are you guys' views on sharding? Does this help you understand what sharding is? Or is there any points that you're unclear about and I will hope to explain to you in a further video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Click the little subscribe button to subscribe to this channel and check me out on Instagram for more cool shots and a way to keep in touch. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.